Hip flexors and speed part two. We're considering swing time. This is the time between contacts of the same foot. So this includes flight time after this foot leaves the ground until this one touches down, plus contact time on this foot, plus another flight time. Okay, all that together is swing time. Now we're looking at this study that took measurements on people who possessed a wide variety of maximum velocities. What this study found is that there's actually not a clear trend in swing time between slow and fast runners. Now they did point out that the Olympic medalists in the 100 meters did have very short swing times, but the slowest subject in the study actually had a swing time that was only two one hundredths away from the swing time of those elite sprinters. So based on this data, there really is not clear evidence that in order to get faster, we have to complete our leg swing in less time. And there's definitely not evidence that we need to spend less time in the air. In fact, faster people might actually spend a little bit more time in the air. So again, this uh, concept of getting to the next step quicker um, it is not valid. However, just because we don't have to complete the leg swing in less time doesn't mean we don't have to move the leg faster. Here's where we would look at a different study, which is Ken Clark's whip from the hip study. What we learned from this is that faster runners tend to use a larger thigh excursion angle. So this is the range of motion that the thigh travels from peak extension to peak flexion. So even if swing time does not have to decrease, if the range of motion is increasing, then the leg is gonna have to use higher velocities to travel through that range of motion in the same amount of time. And this study did indeed find that the average velocity of the thigh throughout all phases of the leg cycle was higher in faster runners. So that piece of evidence is gonna push us back in the direction of thinking maybe hip flexor strength could play a role in speed development. However, I still think we have to ask kind of a chicken or egg question, right? Like, is changing hip flexor strength going to change all that uh, thigh velocity during my sprint cycle, or is changing my leg stiffness going to make me faster, and that's gonna naturally bring about those changes in the uh, thigh velocity without really changing hip flexor strength. Now, another thing I wanna point out about these studies on sprinting is that they look at you know, different athletes and compare the measurements between them. Um, which is honestly not quite the question that we're trying to answer. Um, they'll also look at the same athlete running at different speeds, so like slow jogging all the way up to sprinting. And that, you know, it's useful information, but again, it's not quite the question we're trying to answer. The question we're trying to answer is, same athlete, over time as they develop, what needs to change in order for that to happen? So I would like to put this question out to the speed development world. As an athlete gets faster, does their swing time decrease? So for example, if we looked at those Olympic medalists that were in that first study, uh, their swing time was 0.32. So my question is, what was their swing time when they were running a 10.5? What was their swing time when they were running an 11 flat? Did it have to change over time or was it always that fast? And did something else change? So this is something that I, as a coach, I'm gonna start looking at. Um, I have looked at contact time and I've seen that definitely change over time as an athlete gets faster. Um, I'm gonna start looking at swing time and see if that changes. And I would encourage people out there who are in a position to do that to do the same.